you're among the first batches of divers back in the 60s and 70s, or if you watch old school scuba diving shows like Sea Hunt, then you'll know that there used to be kind of an animosity between two different types of divers. Uh, so the hard hat scuba divers and the open circuit divers. Today, hard hat divers are pretty much limited to commercial divers, but there are still two different types of recreational diver out there, open circuit and closed circuit. Uh, so that and the hippy dippy free divers, but we don't talk about them so that we don't overinflate their egos. Uh, as we all know, so scuba was invented by Jacques Cousteau and Emile Gagnan in 1943, and that really changed the world as we know it, and it actually allowed people to breathe underwater. But what most of us don't really know is that rebreathers actually predate open circuit scuba. So a patent application was made in 1878 for a rebreathing device known as the Fluce rebreather, invented by Henry A. Fluce and Sieb Gorman, uh, that basically recirculated oxygen and uh, was used for the very first time here in England. So a few tweaks and changes over the years, but recreational rebreathers, uh, closed circuit especially, weren't that popular until the 1990s. Now we're looking into rebreather failure points really so most of this is going to be expectedly negative against rebreathers but remember that they are basically thousands of rebreather divers out there and many of these faults and potential dangers weren't fatal thanks to very good training practice and of course a great mindset on the divers part so hi i'm mark from simply scuba and are rebreathers that dangerous Modern rebreathers have integrated electronics that compile all of your dive data and alert you to developing problems. Uh, that is when all components are working fine. So the digital side of rebreathers is often viewed as the most flawed aspect that actually causes accidents. As with any piece of technology, they sometimes freeze or just hang. Uh, so you can glance at your screen and your PPO2 is at a sensible level, but if you're not really paying attention, it could be stuck on the reading from a minute ago. Uh, uh, so there are reports of rebreathers resetting themselves during a dive. Uh, actually, part of the setup procedure and checks is for it to do an O2 cell check where it, the unit actually flushes pure oxygen over the sensors. And that's a bad thing. Outside of the water, it's okay, but at depth, it can lead to an O2 hit. Now, I trust my phone and my PC to kind of do their job when I want them to, but they don't control my breathing supply. So if they screw up, it's just an inconvenience. If your rebreather does it, bad time. Rebreathers will usually be fitted with a oxygen sensor and maybe even a CO2 sensor if you're a little bit swish. Uh, so these are disposable chemical sensors that have a shelf life and need to be calibrated properly before a dive. So somebody was working on a solid state O2 cell, I think I read a little while back. Uh, so that would be a nice alternative, but for now, we do need to keep them locked away in an airtight container so they don't go off too fast. It's a bit like using a slice of bread to check your air quality. But don't do that, obviously don't. There are many failure points on a rebreather with multiple joints and sealing O-rings that all need to be checked and maintained properly. If an O-ring fails on your loop, then your problem can range anywhere from a small little trickle of water that can get caught in a counter lung and just dumped out to a complete flood and acoustic mouthwash. So a 2013 analysis of rebreather fatalities between 1998 and 2010 found that rebreathers have a 25-fold increased risk of component failure compared to a standard twin set configuration. So standard open circuit setups are fairly bulletproof because there's simply much more time and research put into them. The lower demand for rebreathers mean that some are fairly basic in comparison. Okay, so never get lazy with a rebreather and don't try to cut corners or use cheap alternatives. So not packing your scrubber properly can lead to gas tracking freely through it so that your CO2 levels secretly creep up. And if you don't have a CO2 sensor, then the next thing to actually warn you is just gonna be a headache. So rushing into the water is just begging for a problem. And one of the biggest errors, or user errors I should say, is pushing your limits too fast. Going straight down to deeper depths or complicated dives is dangerous. Sure, you have the equipment to go there, but you don't yet have the experience in recognizing problems as they develop or knowing that you are just out of your depth. 
when rebreather manufacturers design their rebreather, they know what they're doing and what not to do as well. So they can omit some basic programming restrictions that are so obviously stupid, but someone not paying attention or who doesn't know what they're doing can, you know, calibrate their O2 sensor so it thinks it's 98% when it's actually 36 or something like that. So bad things can happen. As I said earlier, most of the big manufacturers have teams of smart boys and girls designing, building, and testing open circuit, but that's only because most scuba divers use them. If the popularity of rebreathers and open circuits switched, then more time would be spent foolproofing rebreathers and making them more robust. I mean, I once knew a guy who would use a popsicle stick wedged into a part of his rebreather because it was the perfect space needed to prevent something from leaking. And yeah, there was these two bits and one just kind of just twisted enough that it would like leak at the top. So it's like, no, no, if you jam a, uh, one of those wooden popsicle sticks in, it just... <laughs> so yeah, I guess rebreathers can be dangerous, but you can say that about anything really. I mean, we really have just poked right at the very delicate parts of rebreathers. And if incidents were much more common than they actually are right now, then divers just wouldn't use them, would they? I mean, do uh, sort of rebreathers have a place in the diving community? Yes, I think they do but they should really be reserved for the experienced divers because when something, when an open circuit goes wrong, it's really noisy and obvious that anybody could diagnose what's going wrong. But rebreathers are quiet when they go wrong and you really need to be switched on to a fault before or even during to actually recognize what's happening. But hey, we have just beaten rebreathers to the ground. Let's discuss their good points as well. And of course, rebreathers in general in the comments. I mean, what do you think about them? Would you ever use one? Granted, probably not just after watching this video, um, but I've used a few of my times uh, and they work, they do the job. I did have a problem with one of them on one or two of my dives, but that's what your bailout is for. Hey, thanks for watching and of course, safe diving. Are you sure it wasn't you? That was that Cherry picked the weirdest questions that we came across. And even though they're probably, you know, what answered if you actually click on those questions on Google, uh, I'm actually going to answer them here now because Google has been wrong before and believe it nice. or not. And believe nice. it or not. <laughs> um, there are not. Uh, or there are some plenty of mistruths 